up y'all welcome back to faded truth thank you for being here thank you for subscribing and supporting the grind today i'm excited we have a blast from the past my favorite firecracker <laughs> my favorite firecracker my favorite redhead adult industry superstar content creator cannabis activist porn star the list goes on hustler extraordinaire no. hey i got miss domo monster aka onyx muse in the building hello hello <laughs> You are in my my secret fun place. I like that we have the curtains too, because like yes. you said, it's like you can kind of do this. It's private. Yeah. This is where I go to train for my features, and I do uh, classes here. Okay. So I started to get into I did a little pole training since I met you. Yeah, because it's been two years since we actually. It was kind of during the, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. so. And that was the last time we talked was in my house, my old house in my first studio that I made, so All right, we've yeah. come a long way. Yeah. And we're here at uh, Pole Fitness Studio out here in Vegas. Shout out to them for letting us use this space. Shout out to Fania. This is her studio. She's an amazing woman, one of the first out here to have a pole studio. She has a lot of classes. She does a lot of um, she's content events. Amazing woman, so. Nice. Okay, so first off, cheers. Cheers. Her home. <laughs> Keeping it classy, you know. <laughs> Only had to fight three men at the gas station. <laughs> well, rosé in a bottle. Yep, yeah, you started off right. It's Memorial Day weekend here in Vegas. Yeah, and uh, you wanted to get a lesson. Yeah, I was like, what better to this? do for our taboo than have Miss Domo so, tell us what's going uh, on. During the pandemic, I... I I found a woman who was uh, going to teach me. She did Circus Soleil. She actually, uh, Joanna, she trained J-Lo for Hustler. So I had an opportunity to take classes with her to freshen up my skills. And um, I started showing that on um, Instagram. And all my girlfriends or, and other people, they're like, can you teach me? And I'm like, hey, I'm just learning right. as I go. But now... Um, I have a lot more knowledge on pole, um, so I could teach a few things. I'm not like a credited teacher, <laughs> but uh, I'm in these streets. I'm um, at these clubs. I'm, I I'm practice going to New York it. a lot. Yes, yeah. I have a feature coming up in August back at Sapphires. Um, super fun, and it's nice to like be out there and show my skills. <laughs> plus, plus, New York is amazing. The cannabis world is right. Amazing it's out crazy. There. Every corner is just something there. Yeah, and yeah. there's um, there's these like kind of like speakeasy type of events where you can go. You gotta know somebody right. to get in, but um, really nice like little lounges where you can kind of consume and. And have fun. And now my publicist goes, I'm the adult uh, adult performer, porn star, cannabis, and activist now. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I could, I'll ride with that. Right, like that's a good title. I'm, I am up in this fucking um, industry because now I'm doing the conventions. I got invited to do these cannabis shows where I should show, like normally I should do my adult industry shows, but there's more money in the cannabis shows. So now as I'm doing these, I'm kind of paving the way for other adult entertainment and other adult companies like Novelties to get in the space because there's a lot more money than our little porn fans. So you still call yourself a porn star? I do. Okay. I actually just kind of got back into it. Okay. Did you have fun at EDC? Oh my god, girl. I had so much fun. <laughs> I could only do one day because I uh, didn't have the babysitter for the whole weekend, but I uh, I had an artist band, so I did the whole thing, and then I was like, I had a girlfriend that was going to go with me. She bailed, but I was like, I'm going to just get content. I was trying to do OnlyFans content, but there's just too many people around. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the VIP. I like, know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, you got to be appropriate. I don't want to get kicked out. You're um, only allowed 10, 17 types of drugs, but you cannot show your pussy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just a little acid. I had a good time. But um, it actually, the worst part was it took me a fucking hour to find my car. 
Mm. And so my feet were hurting at that point. I was like, I I'm saw good. the whole line. You know, you could get a helicopter there. So yeah, I'm like, if I, I go, I need, I need to take advantage of that. I had friends. I'm, I'm still trying to get some ballers to get that. I said, why don't you, we get, you know, a bunch of girls, go helicopter. I'm working on it. Not manifesting it next for next year. Next year, I'll be there on Shrew. Next year, we're going, <laughs> okay? You know, the reason I wanted to do this was because we did, me and Priscilla, shout out to P back there. Um, we did a class here, like, what was it, like, month I or two? Saw. It was like a... Um, breath work slash like feminine, feminine yes. energy kind of class yes and so like I used to work at strip clubs when I was like maybe like 18 early 20s like okay yeah that was like my go-to thing I was always the bartender yeah. oh okay, right? okay. I, 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 I can feel that vibe I can feel yeah. that vibe but I was the bartender but then I started doing champagne rooms right because oh, yeah. of course the men want to they want the bartender hey. you know yeah so I really didn't get on the pole like that I just literally would go and make hundred dollars minimum in 20 minutes at each champagne room and just leave the bar come back Four drinks like that's what I did for years you know yeah. um, so I never really like got into the pole work of it because I never had to I never had to do anything but oh. the girls at my job were like hanging off the rafters they were like flipping upside down they were doing all this shit and I'm like that looks so elegant you know there's so no sexy. there's no requirement to go on pole it is sort of like an extra thing for yourself um, if you want to be a showstopper if you want to um, really give your show presence when you're on the pole but nobody teaches you I've done many clubs I've been around the country nobody trains so it's really up to you um, I ghetto taught myself so like I was looking at the girls and I was like okay I think she's doing this I'm gonna do that and then you know you try it hoping that you're not gonna bust your ass in front of the or like like fall on your head yeah yeah um, but you don't really like get practice so if you're going to be a stripper and you do want to do pole, it is essential to go to a pole studio, get some practice, learn some technique for safety. You know, you, you ain't on insurance uh, <laughs> at the club, so if you, uh, you know. Well, because now I feel like, you know, the strip clubs here, like you said, a lot of people are like, yeah, this is my dance. They don't you know, even. There's no, like art to it there's no, like we had drake at the club and i it took me it was really hard to like get in there and i got in there no bitch was doing pole moves i was like the only i did start doing my pole moves and i cleared like the whole stage because i was actually dancing and i'm like you know don't guard the pole and not do shit right. you better be doing shit or get the fuck away um it is a dying art but but it's beautiful. I love it. And it like is. you said, it's good exercise. It's fun. It's, it's great exercise. And it's also kind of like meditating in a way. Like if when, when I'm working on it and I'm focusing on a move, anything that's going on like in my life, that's out the door. Right, because you got to focus. Well, yeah. <laughs> you upside down. <laughs> you better fucking focus. die. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's probably one of my like most favorite hobbies. Okay. Do you have a favorite stripper song that you like to? No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am a real dancer. I could dance to anything. Well, I remember when we talked before. You said you used to break dance. You were doing gymnastics. I did all you kinds did go -go of shit. Yeah. So I did go go dancing a lot. I used to go go dance for Insomniac. So I used to be a dancer. That's kind of how I know people to like go backstage and stuff. But um, and you're talking about like we performed on stage for like two hundred thousand people. So. Dancing in the strip club, taking my top off to some patrons that are going to give me money. It's like, that was no-brainer. Um, the girl who actually made my costumes for Go Go Dancers, she's the one who took me to the strip club. And then she gave me the stripper's handbook. <laughs> which, uh, at the time, I thought everybody had the stripper's handbook. But, because she was hesitant. She didn't want to give it to me. And then I had, I had to get it out of her. And she gave it to me. And I'm a little bit more introverted than her, so I fucking took that handbook. I ran with it. I still have it on my phone. You know, I'll go back to it, but I've got a lot of experience now. So now I got, I kind of got my own handbook in my head um, of, you know, just trick, tips and tricks of how to essentially hustle in the club. 
Right. And so you're not like a permanent dancer in the club. You just kind of go in when you want, right? Yeah. I um, I go in because um, I travel. So I go in almost every weekend, every other weekend. I, I'll only go, like I'm not like going in every day of the week. And that, do you think that makes it easier? It makes it better like because constant. because then a lot of like customers who might be regulars, they're kind of like, whoa, like where have you been? I'm like, I've been here for a long time. I'm like, you just, you haven't seen me yet. <laughs> you didn't open your eyes. I'm in hot demand. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And I love it. I mean, Spearmint Rhino has been my first club that I danced. Really, I danced at one club in LA. And they were like, you're too cute to show your nani. Because it was all nude and they're like go to Vegas it's 24 hours <laughs> it's only topless I was like what I'm going tomorrow <laughs> so that changed my life that was where I got all my like baby stripper years all my trials and errors um, and then I used to live in LA so I would go back and forth and when I would be in LA actually dancing at a bikini bar that was full bar you didn't take your clothes off. That was more profitable for me than going into a strip club where it was all nude. And the owner was cool. I used to, I used to sell like Ace and stuff to like these older dudes who didn't want to go into like a dispensary or or younger dudes. So it was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love being friends with the owner. That's that's like every place I've worked. You got to be friends with the yeah. owners. You got to get in that back room. <laughs> You need oh. to get them to bring their the regulars. <laughs> yeah. So if they start, you know, sending their regulars to you, then right, there's more money in your bank. They're happy with you. Just makes you work smarter. So when I went to Rhino one time, it was before I even moved here. I went with like, it was like four or five of my boys, and we used to always travel, go to strip clubs. Like, oh, shout out to Nappy again. <laughs> he still loves you. Um, but they wouldn't let me in. They wouldn't let me in because they said I looked like a dancer. They, I had this like black and nude two piece on, and I was with them. And I'm like, I'm not even solo. Like, why can't I come in there? Isn't like, no. it funny? What's the, the what's sexism? The deal? So they, they are, um, they fear that if you go in as a girl, because you can't, go, uh, no girl can go into the club by themselves who doesn't dance there. Right. Um, and what's the or for that? You have because to, they think you're because because they think that you're gonna hustle the clientele. You oh, need okay. to be a dancer. Um, it's not that every woman does it, but you know there are some girls. Yes, they come in. I'm going in right, and I'm like, they're feeling did good. It you know, the girls feel like they're all cute in their outfits. They're not a stripper, but then they want to hop on the pole or they want to give lap dances and it's like no you can't do that because right. then it confuses the guests but then also like i kind of feel i mean that's sexist that's sexist because what if why are you what if i like girls i can't go in there and look at girls without a male escort you know yeah and they do that in scottsdale too we went on a bachelorette we went to four strip clubs we were like six girls they not denied us each time you said you need a male escort i'm like why do i need a pimp with me <laughs> yeah like i don't understand we, we about to spend more money than this guy that's been staring for two hours it's a weird system and i think now i feel like it's a broken system like they need to innovate that because now there's a lot more m women who are business owners and you know they're entrepreneurs so they got their own bread but, uh, yeah, we don't have a club where women, you know, we don't have a ladies club where we can go and objectify men, or, <laughs> which I would love. I'm like, I feel like we need that. Well, you're what? What's Fen Dom mean? Because I'm like, where's the Fen? I don't know. I know the Dom. Financial domination. That's the acronym for it. Fen Dom. Fen Dom is Fendom. financial okay. domination. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm a financial dominatrix. Um so, uh, before I decided I wanted to be a stripper and get into porn or whatever, I, I got into BDSM and I was like getting stalked by my ex-boyfriend. He was like extorting me and shit and I was like, I need to do something before I initially go and dance because I thought it was so crazy. So, I decided to do this financial <laughs> domination <laughs> training like as if that's even better. Um, looking back, it was probably dangerous, 
But um, it was interesting. I went to the meeting because the guy I was originally with, I we got into a very hot BDSM relationship, but I was the submissive, and he was my dom. He ended up being a piece of shit, but I was really into, like, the art of BDSM. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll try it. And then the guy who had the ad, he kind of intimidated me. And so I was there, and it was funny. He was, like, asking questions. He was like, what's your experience in BDSM? And I was like, you know what, I don't know why the fuck I'm here. (laughs) I was like, the last relationship that I even started this, I was like, that was a fucking sinking ship. So I was like, I got to go. And then the guy's like, wait, wait, wait. He's like, no. He's like you are perfect for financial domination. He's like, you just, he's like, you're a true dom. He's like, you just don't know how to use your toolbox. So I'm like, fuck. Like, so he sparks my interest. But when you're 20, he goes, when you do the training, you need to, I need your time and attention and I need you to turn your phone off for an hour. So I'm like 23 at the time. And I was like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> How fucking dare you tell me to turn out my phone off? I'm like that. Like, what is this? I'm like, you're gonna try to like steal me or whatever. I don't know. So, anyways, um, and he's like, hey, it's up to you. He's like, if you want to do it, he's like, you come in, give me your undivided attention. He's like, but it's your, it's by your consent. So I was like, I went back and I'm like festering this, and I told my cousin, I was like, hey, I was like, come with me to this thing. She's like, okay. I think she got freaked out. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I turned my phone off, and I started to do these trainings, and this guy changed my fucking gears. He basically somewhat taught me the male psyche and their weaknesses and how to use my toolbox, my power, my feminine energy. So... Um, yeah, did that. I practiced that. I did this training and I passed uh, with the first session because you have to get, you know, initiated. You have, There's a whole process, but you have to do a session and, you know, there's money involved with it. Okay, wait, but I'm still confused. What the fuck is it? It's- so financial domination is, so I'm a dom. Okay, so their fetish is either... Boobs, tits, ass, feet, fucking smoky, whatever the fuck, right? In return, my fetish is money, shopping, gifts, lavish, everything expensive, whatever the fuck I want is going, like, that's what they need to do to earn my attention. So it's like a sugar baby, but you have to earn it. No, not a sugar baby at all. They're essentially they're my bitch they're my human atm they're my human wallet so whatever i need for me or if i'm catering to my girlfriends this motherfucker i'm going to say give me money get pay for this do this there is an exchange it is somewhat complex because people think that there is some kind of sexual trade when there's not, actually, so half of the time, most of the time, I'm completely clothed. It is different per bitch. And do you have to be with them to ask them for the money, or can you just can no, you have so, it on No, well, so this is what's going on, is I kind of fell, <laughs> I turned into, I it used to be in person, so you would have these guys in person. That was kind of the crazy part, because you're like, fuck, I don't know if this guy is like, right. going to kill me, or whatever. Now with OnlyFans and the internet, so I do virtual dates and virtual shopping on my OnlyFans. So I'll get like high-end reservations at dinners and the highest tipper gets to take me shopping or I take them shopping. And then I go into these high-end stores. I, they're not with me, but they can pay extra to either be on Skype or Zoom. In real time, I'm shopping with them. <laughs> There's a lot of technology now where I don't need them there. They can I pay. I think it's still crazy that people have these fetishes with women where they're like, fuck it, take all my money, I don't care. Yeah. All for just even, like, it's just crazy. It's, it's what crazy. a time so, to be alive. Do you feel like when he 
like got you more into the male psych than it like literally just cha- changed like, my shit. Your whole, so, everything with how you run business and just so the guy, the guy was essentially making money off of me because we were using his uh, dungeon, his space for the sessions, and at the time I didn't have a space, but I needed to practice and. After I kind of felt like exploitive with him, like he was kind of pushing me where he was telling these guys I'm like super sadist and I'm like really into this and I'm like, whoa, hey, hey, I'm like, don't be telling them that. I'm like, I'm still learning. Like, I'm like, I, like I'm trying to, you know, deal with this. Um, I eventually told him to go fuck off. Um, I went to Vegas. I dyed my hair red and... I tested it on anybody. Anybody who fucking hit on me, an Uber driver, I'm at the grocery store, somebody fucking, anybody, customer in the in the strip club, I tested it out. I, a lot of trial and error, but now I have practiced a lot to know what's the right protocols, how to negotiate, how to set up the meeting, how to initially get this fucker to give me money with a smile on his face and want to come back. Do you have one tip in general for women? With the yes. Men? Um, so with, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, just a little tip is don't feel remorseful for you you know, stepping it up a notch, meaning, well, no, we're not going to go shopping at Victoria's Secrets. We're going to go to high-end stores, Asian Provocateur, Louis, Fendi, Gucci, whatever, and you let them know, like, okay, you want to bother me in my day? You want to fucking take up my space and my energy? It's going to be a lot of fucking money. Otherwise, fuck you. I'm blocking you. Where do you find these people? On all? all over. Um, honestly, they've came from Instagram, sugar daddy sites, because you can actually uh, set your profile up where you can attract these type of guys. I've heard LinkedIn. I haven't personally found it, but I know some girls that have LinkedIn. I'm currently um, suspended from LinkedIn. I don't know what the what I keep doing. Maybe you've been thinned on me. <laughs> They're like, we know about. You. <laughs> um, honestly, you can get them for whatever. I've had guys come from Snapchat, um, whatever. Like, you just friends That's my friends. issue. My issue was when I was in the, I guess you could say, adult industry. I hated talking to people I didn't want to talk to. Like, I just, you know, I hated, like, having to pretend and be like, yeah, I give a fuck. I don't. You know, so I feel like oh, I would that. always be like a dominatrix type person. I, you I'm a- definitely got the dominatrix <laughs> feel. When I first met you, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she ain't so taking no I, shit. Maybe I'm not in the right industry. <laughs> we got to add it to the things of passive income, I think. You, you just got to like, you got to know the protocols of how to find these guys and how to decipher because a lot of guys waste their fucking time. They, you know tell us bullshit just to get what they want but what women we need to do is say we need to change the script we need to get what we want because I've had bitches who've came you know sometimes a lot of guys they'll pretend to be into the fin dom to like get with me and I'm like nope you don't want to do that because once you're that that you know so they have a fight with themselves But a lot of them who are really into it, like, they want me to talk shit to them, humiliate them, objectify them. Where does that come from, you think? (laughs) Um, I, so, a lot of these people, they're, you know, they could be CEOs, they could be powerful people in their own personal life, where a lot of people rely on them. So, in their personal life, they don't want to be that. They want to be... (laughs) That's a good way of looking at it, I guess. They want to be restrained. They want to have, like, you know, given so, a lot like of sub, right? I was the best sub that I could be, but <laughs> I had pushed back because I, me and my dom were conflicting because I'm not a sub. I eventually gotcha. got over it mm-hmm. and. But it's good to be a sub because in BDSM tradition, I had to learn from the bottom. So in order for me to be a top and to be able to dom any of these people, 
I am endured everything that I do to these guys. So I know what the fuck I'm doing. Gotcha. I've been through that. There's a lot of girls who are amateurs and they feel, oh, they're just going to yell at the guy and, you know, be a bitch. And that's not being a dom. And that's also like, you're just giving that free energy away because they, that's what they want. But it's like, you're going to be a bitch to him before you got the shoes from Gucci, before you got the handbags, before... No. No. So you have to play your role until... And get what you want to give them what they want. I think the only time I'm a sub is when I'm having sex. Because, like, I'm a dom in my real life, you know? Sure. Like, I'm a boss in every aspect. Sure. But when I have sex, I, I like to be controlled because I... I think, I, like you said, it's like tech. It's the opposite. Usually, yeah, right. it's opposite. I haven't gotten into the whole like straight, like, uh, what is it? Mr. Gray type shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what level I can go to with that. But I, I mean, I've done some crazy shit, so I'm like, maybe. My, I did get into that. My way of getting into it was probably like super <laughs> hot. It, it was hot until it just like. You know, I was like, eh, you're, you're not really that type for me anymore, but... Is there, like, an insane request you've heard from people, like, in BDSM? Like, what's the weirdest thing people ask to get done? Yeah, I've had armpit worship, <laughs> which I was like, what? Like, why not? Like, you know, I... So, <laughs> I, I get some pretty weird requests um, on camming. I have a lot of dudes that they want me to do come eating instructions which I'm like they're paying me and they're like you know I just have to like direct them talk shit to them and then give them a countdown and then they do this whole like flip and they're all fucking they do it on their face and they eat it and I'm like okay all right what the fuck yeah so I mean they it ranges <laughs> There's the feet guys. I like the feet guys. Yeah, that's we were always, talking about that that's before. That's always really easy. The um, there's a lot of uh, talk that, you know, yes, you can be an OnlyFans creator based on your feet, but you got to have a strategy with it. Right. And you got to know the the poses for your feet. You we know, did these, the, ha the half these out are, These are the ladies, you know. <laughs> they like to see That's the why I've been trying to fix my bunion. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I can't be in a bunion this early. Like, <laughs> I might need my feet for some bunion. Um, <laughs> where uh, I've kind of learned a little bit about the feet, um, like where it comes from. I know and some say that they have it at birth and it's kind of like when they're a baby, they're closer to like their mom's feet when they're on the floor. So it's almost like, you know, that's their like feminine energy that they. Do you think a lot of men have mommy issues? Oh, it's, yes. Is it like the same where they Tons. say women have daddy issues? Like yes. same thing, right? Yes. Because I feel like a lot of men look for that like motherly role, or like they want you to coddle them sometimes. And I. Like, Where's this coming from? You know that? what's funny is when I do my dom sessions, or even if I just have her like my advertising on my Twitter for like my cam shows. I don't know what, I mean, now I'm a mom, but I don't know why I always get these guys that go, can you play the mommy? And I'm like, <laughs> it's, I'm like, I really don't want to, but, um, yeah. So yeah, mo mommy issues is a thing. I think the guys are in denial, but, um, <laughs> so they hate on us that. for you daddy even, issues. Yeah, fuck the daddy issues bullshit. Y'all got some mommy issues. That's why they want to be <laughs> humiliated and told, you know, go sit in the corner with your diaper. <laughs> <laughs> your pacifier in. Okay, so we're going to okay, stretch now. So, yes, so one of the most important rules of doing pole is to stretch your body. Um, you want to stretch your neck out. Ooh, so I love that. turn side to side and then you're going to do a roll. So kind of alternate doing side to side because you're going to need it. You don't want to get a neck crank and then roll it. I love that. One to the right. That. Do like three rolls and then roll to the left. Okay, 
and then you want to stretch your arms out so cross over your chest really you know stretch your shoulders rotate um, it's really good to stretch everything and then kind of pull your arm over your elbow behind your head you gotta get all limber for this do you do yoga at all I um, I need to do more yoga I did a few classes and it was really great but I need to get back into it I did a hot yoga class this was I don't, really nice yeah see I don't like it because I work out on my own I like the yin yoga where it's like long stretches like yeah four minutes and it's a meditation yeah I like the meditation yeah. part I think that's the benefit um, so if you stand up now you're gonna like stretch over right side and just really you want to stretch out your abdomen and then go flat back kind of yeah right there and this will help with like your hamstrings and then move your hands down to the floor so you could really feel that stretch in your legs and then you're gonna raise it up and you wanna just go as back as you can and then do the same on the other side and this is just a essential stretch that helps because you want to stretch before you get on the pole and after you get on the pole. Just go straight down in the middle. Um, try and stretch, like push yourself in between your legs as far as you could go. Just to help with that. And then we will get down, legs out, and uh, right side stretch to that side just more stretching and this helps with your legs and your flexibility it always gets me here yeah but it's good to stretch and then kind of go flat I've gotten actually since I've been doing yoga for years now I've gotten so much more flexible see that I used to work out do cheerleading compete me I too. never stretch. like even when I worked out every day I never would stretch long I, I did feel like tumbling. that hindered me. I did tumbling, so I did stretch, but I think over time as you get older, you're, you don't have that coach there to push you, but I still try to do like... Now I try and do it every day. Yeah. If not, I'll, be, I'll feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I felt it in my neck. Do you give it a lot of bruises from Fuck the yeah. Ball? Fuck yeah. Because I just did Muay Thai back home and I had so many bruises and I'm and like, they're almost gone. <laughs> Not and until today. <laughs> if you go uh, forward, just kind of push yourself as far. And that really like helps stretch your legs and your hamstrings and it just feels better. Can you do a split? You can. I can. I could do splits both ways. What's the trick to learning splits? Just doing it I, over and over? I can't. Um, I did cheer. Right, but for, I'm saying, but I have it, I no it idea. Uh, you know what it is? Um, you really need to help yourself. Um, you need to keep your chest up straight. Um, and where you kind of put your weight. Like, I have my weight on this butt cheek area so that my legs can stretch but if you want to ever like really Did practice you know? yeah like doing stuff like this that can help your form for your back leg then eventually like little by little you ah, can like move your leg I never thought forward. that because that's one of my favorite yoga yeah. positions is pigeon because I'm like this <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and it's just like so you just want to like kind of you know, hold yourself up if you need to um, get it balanced and just kind of walk your leg as far as you can. And over time, just always work. Mm -hmm.
so that's kind of a little check that you can do. Um, it helps, but over time, um, and I think just continuous stretching, it helps, especially as you get older. You know, things don't work like they used to when you were younger. <laughs> How old are you now? <laughs> I'm 33. I'm going to be 34. Really? Uh, we're the same age. June. Oh, yeah. shit. I'm 34 in November. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So how was your 33? Because you know that's your Jesus year. It's like... Is it? They say uh, it's like the best year. It's like when you come into like either a lot of good things or... I definitely... My 33 was great. It was also um, challenging because um, we'll do one where you cross your leg over and kind of stretch your back. Um you know, I'm a mom now, and, and now my daughter's three, so them toddlers, they will, you know, they're so smart, they just, uh, it taught me a lot. It really taught me, first I had to like overcome the weight, getting my, my shape back. back. That was probably the most challenging experience, but then I have this little human I had to sleep train, I had to potty train, I had to uh, teach them how to eat solids, and uh, kind of just stretch both legs down. So, um, but then also I had to find the balance of being able to do my work, since I can't take my daughter to work type of work, um, and <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, nap time is content time. Being able, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's whatever you can do. And then we'll do what? The last stretch. Oh, oops, sorry. The last stretch I like to do is just a bridge. Yes. That really helps with just getting your body really in that zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel that? Yeah, I felt it in like my, like right under my shoulder blades. Oh. And now, so now you're ready to get the <laughs> knee pads on. Come on, get my knee pads. Did you get heels? Did you bring No, yes. Heels? I was going to show oh, you what I brought okay. in my little. Because I didn't, you know, okay. I have actually these dance shoes from my fitness competition, but I threw them out. And I think they would have been perfect dancer heels because they had that, like, yes. thick plastic. Yes. So I don't really have, like, dancer heels. I have, I just brought two sparklies. I don't know and which one would you, be better. Sometimes when you're just learning, you can also be barefoot. I was going to say, you want to start barefoot and then maybe... Yeah, you, yes. I brought a little... I knew you like schoolgirls. I was going to be... Oh, a little, girl! You know, girl! Yeah. <laughs> I know. I brought... I didn't know if we were... I mean, I have... This is Thank just you. a simple outfit. I like to practice in this, but I did bring my my work attire. We're going to get, get there, but... We don't gotta get too crazy. I gotta get I my can knee show pads you. On. Yes, these are gonna be I'm so your happy friends because yeah, I'm happy because I I crashed. I went to Honduras last summer and I crashed an ATV into a tree. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> and um, thank God I'm here, but I definitely fucked my right knee up, and um, it's been it's been a struggle because I've been trying to you know I'm really Fuck, active, yeah. so. I've been trying to keep it under control, and the cannabis, um, this like I have this like really good THC salve that works really well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so this guy, this is this is your friend. Okay, this is what they don't teach you in the club. So <laughs> a little <laughs> goes a, little. a long yeah. way. This is pole grip. Um, there's liquid, or there's kind of like a paste that you can get. I usually I'll put like. See that little drop? That's all you need because you're going to go like this. Get your arms, get it on your legs, your butt, anything that can touch the pole. Just to help. It's pole grip. It is going. Oh, wow. Yes. So that's the secret. Pole grip. That's the secret recipe. Like? Nothing. Like it just feels a little. Uh, and you'll feel in your hands are just kind it's of a like. a little sticky. Yeah. Not sticky, but. Not, but it's going to help you grip the pole. Okay. 
So um, I wash the poles, but you all, when anytime you're at the strip club, anywhere, yeah, they come up, they, you want to wipe it yes. down. Because you want to <laughs> get all that booty funk off of there. I want to get all that snail trail <laughs> off. Let me tell you. I don't need the last girl's <laughs> booty funk on me. Okay, so this, so you want to put your, your left hand and my pointer finger is going to be facing up um, and just always have that grip because okay. that's going to help you. It may feel a little weird at first, but it's going to help you. And then you want to get your right hand and you're going to grip it. And what you want to do is you want to have this forearm like this. So if you want to keep it effortlessly, this is going to help you make it look sleek. Like you're not trying because you don't want to be like a fireman or right. you're like that. Um, that's not sexy. So point your finger up, thumb around, forearm. Put your hand, uh, right hand, and you could just have it wrapped around. And then you're going to push down on your forearm to help you up. Okay. okay so it's going to be like this. Oh, okay. Yes. And what's gonna, how this is gonna help you is so as you do this, hold yourself. You wanna squeeze your legs around. And then you're gonna do the same. So Why am I turning? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's because it's, um, uh, it's on rotation. Okay. If you want me to make it static, I can make it work. No, you're good. I like it. I like when it rotates. And that's going to help you. So that's where you're going to start to use your upper body strength to hold yourself up. So forearm, uh, point your finger up, right hand, uh, right arm uh, above, and push. So wrap your legs around. Kind of have your knees. So... When you do this, you're going to have like a good distance from the pole. You're going to just wrap your knees around and kind of squeeze your body to like hold there. Yeah, there you go. And then push up. I'm going to have my forearm. So you're just like <laughs> rotating. <laughs> and then you can just sit. Oh wow! I feel like I need wow. heels now. <laughs> I need to put some heels on, but the it's the heels don't really do much, but they do kind of help. They get oh. you in the zone. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm telling you, one thing I don't have is upper body. <laughs> I have to get my tits um, done. That shit got fucked up. I feel. Just always remember to squeeze your body. The whole body. The whole body, and uh, you know, okay, so you did chair, you did gymnastics, right? Remember how to squeeze your body as you're doing all the moves? It's kind of the same, except you're doing it on a pole. And that's just gonna help you stay in positions and help you not fall on your ass and slip. How long did it take you to get your upper body strength up when you started? Girl, it's been 10 years of me dancing in the strip club, but um, I would say probably about like four years for me to really attain, you know, um, muscle memory on the pole and, and really like getting, because when you do repetition, that is how you get comfortable with the pole. Usually, like, with your, you don't really dance with the pole, so you're a little, like, hesitant. But when you do a lot of practice, so, you know, I've been, I've been in them clubs working. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, I had to put my mind to it. But um, once I started doing the technique, it got really it got so much yeah, easier because this is a weird it is kind of a weird technique it's but. gonna feel weird what my um instructor told me she's like it's gonna feel weird in the beginning but then you're going to build your strength to hold yourself so you need to squeeze your abs squeeze your legs squeeze everything in your body so you can stay in the position and then move to the next Ooh. position okay all right
and then we'll we're gonna go. We'll do two climbs, and then you're gonna sit. Just so your there. first initial climb, and then you're gonna do one more. So you're gonna rotate hands. So when I'm up there, then I'm gonna use this forearm, put my pointer finger up, and kind of grab with the other one to pull myself up. So I'm gonna be like here, and then right, and just sit. But you're not jumping, you're just gripping, yeah? On the first I one? I am, um, I'm pulling, I'm pulling myself up. So it's kind of like this, yeah, <laughs> your, your left there. arm, your left arm's gonna push down and this arm is gonna pull up. Wow. It's kind of weird, but, so push well, down. I up. Yes, and then switch arms. Wow, so. that's a lot more than I thought. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is this your first time doing one? I never climbed the pole. Oh, shit. Now you can, if you want to make it easier, uh, instead of climbing two climbs, you could just pull yourself up and sit. Right. It just helps to get a little bit more lift off of the floor. But twisting your legs is what is what kind of holds you, right? Because you with your skin. You what it is too, it. it's as I'm twisting my legs, I'm squeezing my knees around the pole. So the the my knees that are squeezed to the pole is helping me stay in my position. They're very little like intricate moves. I you really want to I just had a whole new respect. <laughs> In one, in one I second. Can, I mean, I'll show you just some little ways. Can, pull, but not really. can you go up? Can and you climb see, it? when you're sitting, squeeze your thighs around. Anything that's gripped around the pole, you're gonna squeeze your body for dear that's life. That's why people have like bruises in here. Okay. Oh yeah. Does it go away eventually? You just get more, you, you, um, it doesn't phase you anymore. Right. So your body is used to it. Because how, when people flip, how are they flipping? It's all technique. So always remember that, right? So, and I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate. Yes, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I am squeezing myself to do all these moves. So right here, I'm squeezing my shoulder. Okay. And this is saving me. And then right here, squeezing my fucking thigh and my... Uh, so, when my teacher <laughs> taught me in, all the <laughs> teachers here, pole hurts. Right. But once you get used to it, it doesn't hurt no more. It just hurts because your body's not used to it. Right. It's you're using muscles that you <laughs> you really yeah. did not you yeah. you don't know that you're yeah. using. But I'm not so close and your feet to the are pole on the yet. pole. I wasn't even putting them on the pole. You kind of use that as a little yes. kickstand. Yes. Okay. And like um and I'll show you a way like that they like you can climb pole. You use your shin, right. and you kind of wrap your foot around, but same thing, a pull and a push. So, you know, you can wrap around, oh, yeah. That was better. Okay, so how do you do the little, like, let's do the basic Okay, little, so you want to do the, you know, when the girls, like, fly, do the twirl, fly around, so. <laughs> So if you want to do the twirl, God, sometimes I can't even think about it. Um, whatever your dominant arm is, so mm -hmm. this your right hand, you're gonna pull yourself. Now you're gonna turn inside and turn this way, right? So you'll be around the pole. Same thing, shin, pointer finger. You're gonna cross your legs. And this, so oh, your, your left hand is gonna go down. 
and that is gonna put, and then this, you're gonna kinda twist it, and it's gonna help you. So super, super easy, but. Now do most stripper, uh, most clubs have the, the pole moving? No, uh, most clubs, the pole is stationary, but there has been some clubs that have updated where they do have a rotating pole. So you have to know how to right. kind of do both. Um, stationary, like when the pole is just stationary, it's um, a little bit more, uh, you're using a lot more right. body strength because it's stationary where the rotating poles are kind of cheating. So what's, okay, so what's the one where they go like this? Where they put both of their legs up? Uh, I'm talking about? What, like, like this? Yes. Okay, so um, right hand up, this is going to be, and then your thumb, your index finger is gonna be pointing up. So you are just walking around, and then you wanna pull your, you're kind of pulling yourself up Squeeze your body so oh, it's like your a lower ab. Yes, you when you're squeezing yourself and you're staying in that position, that's you're using your up your abdomens and your thighs holding yourself up. So you're right. essentially holding yourself up, but the, the pole is helping you. So step and pick your legs up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just little things that go a long way, but essentially this kind of position is always going to be your helper and you want to always, uh, if you're going to pull yourself up, it's putting that forearm to the pole. Gotcha. And this is going to help you out because when I'm in the air, so when I'm up, like I'll show you. I'm gonna use the same thing. It's oh, so the that's forearm. Like, that's like the side. Yeah. And then, let me see here. And the, sheesh, everything. Do you drink or when you're on the job? Fuck yeah. Cause I'm like, can you, do you get dizzy or anything? No. I've been doing it a long time. But uh, I, in between my drinks, I drink a Red Bull so I don't get too fucked up. <laughs> Cause sometimes when you get too fucked up, yeah, it can, um, you just gotta be mindful. So I try, usually when you're at the strip club, you get one stage time. So. That's it? That's it. Because there's so many girls? So many girls. You can make friends with the DJ. You want to tip him so he'll put you back up there. Right. But your stage time is you're going to rotate to multiple stages. Okay. Um, so that's your spotlight. <laughs> it's your time to shine for me personally. My work doesn't start until I go on stage. Cause right. then guys can see you. And then they wanna come up, get a room. You do your dance and all that, yes. So, um, some girls tip to not go on stage and I'm kind of like, well, what the fuck? Why are you a dancer? But every girl's hustle is different, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they're going off of their comfortability and stuff, but honestly, doing stage is kind of where you're gonna get seen. Now I mean I, now I get why there's lack of women on the pole. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're like fuck that. I mean I think if clubs made it a requirement to like take spend some days to practice. I mean the normal dance that you see now is not even like it's barely anything. It's just like yeah. You know, maybe like a little like and it's like I mean like what <laughs> I do. So you, there is a thing called floor work. So this is why we got our knee pads but okay. you want to you know you could use the pole and drop yourself because the knee <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Gotta work on your splits, but you drive your knees. Stretch. It oh, is. Nice. It is. And it's nice because the pole can like help you to oh, put you, you can shift your weight onto there so you can get down. And then, you know, you want to get Do into little, that moves. I'm good at the pole. I'm good at the floor thing. Okay. The floor work is where it's at, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have. This was always the go to. It was like, yeah, <laughs> where they bounce. Um, I always, th this is my like money move. So like I'll be doing that right. and then I flop my butt. <laughs> I don't know why that always gets them to be like, yeah, do it let's do it. <laughs> so you're kind of like going down um, and you also like want to show your shape right. as a woman. And then you just kind of like push it over to the left, so wait, right side. Right. And you just drop your booty. <laughs> <laughs> Let it jiggle in their face. <laughs> um, another move on the floor that's really good that I've learned. I actually lear learned it here. But um, so they'll, like, this is your stage, and you open your legs mm -hmm. and then you kind of so this little thing oh yeah i love those i love that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you could do i mean you could do like here they love that shit and then always clap you gotta clap yeah, them you gotta clap them. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you wake them up <laughs> but Take me, motherfucker. but yeah you know and, and honestly everybody like they find their groove and that's and then you bring and then you come back and you bring yourself back up here yeah and you so you pole. can like work your way around the pole you know right. um, you can use the pole I always do like a little twirl and then um, I'll even like kick my leg around and this this is the good one, you know, stick your booty out. When you clean the pole. Uh-huh. <laughs> clean the pole, let that booty, you know, let them follow that booty. Um, and it's like your pole's your friend, but you also gotta, Talk to you them. gotta learn how to not use the pole, so you wanna work the whole stage. You, you don't wanna stay by the pole, because the pole is never right at the customers. Right. So. I'll do something where, you know, and this takes, this takes time of, you know, leg muscles, but <laughs> I'll go to the stage and I'll be like this, and this is my money move. <laughs> I'll just, I always like do that and it wakes them up. Right. <laughs> and then you can like tap your butt, you know, you just give it a nice good slap and <laughs> You know, it's kind of like you put your butt in their face, and right. but you're also like, you're flowing, you're um, showing all your lady features, and you're just having like a good time. A lot of girls, a lot of girls kind of, uh, they got that bitch face mm -hmm. when they're on the stage, like they don't give a fuck, but if you, I hate that. I don't like why that. Why do I want to tip someone that doesn't want to be here? I don't like that. I don't know why they do that, you know, but um, every time I'll be like in the customer space, I'm like, damn, I can't even get a smile or what? I'm like, Egh. and so then that kind of gets them laughing right. because it is no, kind of intense. a lot of people don't talk to them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I always did, like when I did go-go dancing and stuff, it was like a fucking lot of work. But we're not strippers, so we're trying to like get the crowd entertained. So when I see like the strip club and the customer, especially if there's ladies there with their dude and they look like they just fucking don't want to be there, it's like you try to interact with them in that type of way. Be flirty. Right. Like, well, make that's them like laugh. Any, I feel like that's any service industry, though. Absolutely. That people don't realize, like, you got, do you want them to come back or are they just going to be money for one night? Yeah. So I don't, I don't understand the bitch face uh, when you're dancing, but it's like, show a little smile. I mean, actually, a lot of men, that's what they, uh, 
that is kind of their what they're searching for. Okay, okay so you so want to wear one thirty-seven? Do you want to so put music on? Yeah. Go ahead. To you to dance to? Yes. yes, I do. Okay. What is now? I could dance to anything, but what's your go-to? Hmm. You um, like rock? I feel like you like rock. Oh, I like rock. Yeah, I got a. Some of those like rock ones are really good on. stripper songs, I or gotta, like like porn star dancing. This or something. is. <laughs> <laughs> that is a classic. Uh, this girl used to dance to. Uh, Porn star dancing. That's in the rotation <laughs> at my at my club. So, but this is this is a perfect. This is an iconic stripper song. Nine Inch Nails, Closer, I Wanna Fuck You Like an Animal. Oh, this is a good, uh, yeah. I feel like I'd always be a good burlesque dancer or something. Absolutely, that's what I'm getting into. This, okay. uh, this is like, you wanna like tease before you get right. to the moves, you wanna tease around the park. The pole. I like that. Whew. So that knee one is just. So that is, I'm putting my let, my uh, right leg, gripping it on the pole. I'm gonna, so my left arm is gonna grip. Okay. And then I'm gonna raise my right arm, and then I'm gonna put the weight off. You're kind of rotating. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, so what my, uh, what my instructor always told me, most of the time, this right arm, you're gonna like push yourself away. And then this arm is usually gonna like, it's gonna be the pull. So you're pulling yourself in, but right. this is pushing yourself out. Okay. So you have that space, and they could see like your lines, where you're not like so close, but so. Grip, you're just gonna move your hand down here and then turn and pick your leg up. I think this is called the jade. What? <laughs> you can also put your hand down here. How come so I'm sliding you, down? Am I not gripping hard enough? Ah, uh, I'm sliding let down. Me see. Yeah, um, okay. As I go around, I'm like sliding down. Yeah. So you can, um, Sometimes when you're sliding down, you're gonna wanna wipe the pole with alcohol. So clean the pole off, not too much. You don't want it too watery. watery. And this is where the grip is your friend. Okay. So you can add a little more. Sometimes when we kinda do it a couple times, it wears off, so then you'd wanna, oh no, no worries. I'm like that's cool. Yeah, but it's um, this is where you wanna like see my arm, lock it, squeeze your arm. That's gonna help grip it. Okay. And then this is you wanna just have a very solid grip. Like I don't even know what to compare this to. I forget, but it's just like. And you're still like straight up though. You're not like. Yeah, Meaning, right? my body is straight because um, even if I push away, I'm 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 solid on this, and I'm 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 gonna pull if I need to, but if I push out, then this is locks, and I kind of have this like uh, symmetry going on. Right. This, I'm gonna be squeeze your arms. Your arms are gonna be fucking helping you <laughs> out. When I'm gripping, I'm squeezing the fuck out of my uh, my my leg. So I'm, you squeeze the shit out of the pole. It's gonna hurt in the beginning, but then you eventually get used to it. So then 
you could start turning and then pick your leg up. Pick it up and then slide down and then this hand will go point your finger down. Why'd I stop? <laughs> Let me see. I thought it was good for a sec. Yeah, yeah you kind of had it. Wait, so go back to the flip straddle because I really yeah. do want to try and flip. So, um, the one with the, the no, leg? No, the one you just flipped. And you did Where it. you put your hand underneath? Um, you just flipped upside down with your legs like this. The one that I just did this way? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so um, wrap your arm, or, or wrap the pole around your armpit. This is going to be in your armpit. Okay. And then you're going to have your your arm like this, or your hand like this, sorry. Grip the pole, and then your right leg is going to, it's going to almost do be like a donkey kick. Like you're going to push back, because that's going to get you some velocity. Right. And then you're going to tuck your legs together, so your knees, and hold yourself up, but you need to push your head back. Like you don't stay here, right. you need to fall back so your legs can gracefully separate. I feel like it's the first time doing a handstand. You just gotta do it. <laughs> you just gotta do it. You Hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, right here, so I'm gonna, and then, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and then as you're kicking yourself, this arm is gonna wrap around and you're gonna, you're basically having your arms twist and they're gonna help, help you out. You know when you're like sucking a guy off and you gotta do a little salt and pepper? Yeah. <laughs> salt uh, pepper shaker. <laughs> um, so, kick back. I think this oh. is called the invert. Okay, that was close. I got my first fear out the way. Wait, wait. Right, your, your inside leg. Right, this one, yeah? Yeah, so this one, and then, let me see, so here, right there. Okay. So, where your arm is gonna be facing forward. And then here. Squeeze the fuck out of that, right okay. there. Oh! <laughs> Almost. So I just need more, like, intensity to get over? Yes. And put my head back. So, um, and your frame, Squeeze your body. Um, when you're squeezing your body, that will help you be able, because you do gotta like lift your, your butt up. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna be lifting. So as you're kicking, you're gonna lift, you know, your other knee's gonna come up, squeeze the fuck, and you're lifting your butt to go into that split. And where's my right leg going? Over here? Or on this Um, side? We're just gonna go straddle out. I so. Let me see, let me, hold on, let me. Kind of keep your arms, or your hands close together. Wrap around, go straight. Because <laughs> you make it look more easier, like you're not flipping all the way over. You're kind of just I'm like not, halfway. I am, I'm, I'm squeezing my body up, and then I'm dropping to let go, but I'm holding myself up and then it allows me to open my legs. Right there. Ah, bring your, um, yeah, there you go, see? And it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect when you're first learning, but over time, yeah. Over time, your muscle memory is going to grow. Right now, you're almost like a baby calf. Right. You don't know what you're and doing. Crazy, you're a little like, wobbly. I high last week, and I can't fucking get on a pole. You know, so it's, it's like, a it's a weird the capacity of the. It's a weird little. Of fucking, what it takes. Yeah. Okay, so let's do like a little. You want to do like a little like a routine? Routine. Yeah. Of course. Let me. Let me do. You like that one though. What? You like that one? <laughs> the flip is good. It's just about, you got to get used to, um, okay, we had 10 minutes, so I'll do something, but you just got to get used to um, squeezing your body and your arm positions, and over time, you know, 
trial, error, repeat, right. practice. You're going to get used to it. It's just like going to the gym. You're lifting your weights up and on my style, I'm going to say. This is kind of my shit right now. So. So. We'll do, do the turn. Kind of put your arm in. Turn yourself. And then as you're kind of like resting on, just slink your body like around the pole. Where you're kind of like teasing that you're gonna do work on the pole, but you're not gonna give it to them just yet. And then you'll, so you'll push with your right hand. It's gonna be a little like your arm is almost twisted because you're gonna push yourself out and then slink around the pole. You could do a little pull. And it's also, it's like, don't be, like, you don't want to be robotic and be like, pa, pa, pa. Like, you're not a cheerleader. Right. So it's like, improvise. Like, you really fuck you up for a little bit because you were robotic after? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I had to learn hip hop. class and they're like, girl. Yeah, I, exactly. I'm a cheerleader, I'm sorry. But it's like, don't be afraid to, like, have fun and improvise. You want to do a little improv. So then we'll go right here. Wait, hold on. I don't want to get into that one first. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. So we'll go here. Start fun. Working your way around, you know. Like, act like this is your dude. And you're just like, no, like you're teasing him. You're like, I'm not gonna come to you. Um, and, um, it's good to like work around the pole, like in the beginning, you know, you're just walking around. You can even just hold it, put your ass in their face. And then you can get into, so we could get into this one. Ready? So right arm up, we're gonna grip down. Turn, pick your leg up. Okay, okay. Okay, girl. We just gotta get you a little higher. <laughs> that and, and getting. That was so cute. It was cute. I got it, I got it. And it's just getting yourself, you know, that's where the upper body strength comes in, where you're able to pull yourself higher. So when you're doing these moves. Good. My lower body, but my upper is. Woo. It, and it's all just, you know, you have to get muscle memory. Muscle okay, memory. So. Walk, 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 walk. Walk, walk. Little, little tease. Little tease. And then we'll come around. And, do and then we'll come around. Right hand up. Leg, squeeze the fuck out of that. Put your arm down, point your finger down, and pick your, just pick your leg up. <laughs> and this is the first day, girl, so don't think you're gonna get started and be, be busting it. So then we'll just kinda, and then we can kinda, um, Improv on the floor. Oh yeah, and yeah, the last, absolutely. And the last play, we'll try the flip. Okay, and okay. Just, and then after that, you take it and you do your own. Thing. Okay, okay. So look, so work around the pole. Use that as your guide. So then you'll break away from the pole. Start, you know, dance. Put, um, kind of put in yourself, and then you could. You could do that, or you could even, okay, that's like more advanced. So you could just, but you could do this where, and then you're, yeah. You could kind of help yourself get into it, yeah. I mean, I can still, you know, I'm all over there. Get on your knees, booty roll, you know, let them see your whole frame. 
when, uh, when you don't have the knee pads on, does it like hurt? Uh, yeah, yeah. But you're kind of getting adrenaline, so it won't hurt until after you go into the dressing room. Because <laughs> you're on stage and you're just like, you're trying to get in, look good. Okay, what's our song going to be? What is our song going to be? Hold on. You want a Nicki Minaj? You want a... Yeah, something sexy. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I got a song for you. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, you can turn it on. Okay, now we're gonna walk over to our pole. Right hand up, yeah. Legs, grip it down. Pick your the left leg up. <laughs> the, the way that I get out of it is more advanced, but what you could do is you could even slide down so that you land on the floor. So you can, yes, yes. And then that's when you can get it for work. Where's your sweat? <laughs> Too. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm about to get this shit. <laughs> but. Okay, and you want to try this one? The armpit? Let's try it, girl. Okay. Squeeze it in that armpit pocket. Put that right, the left arm right above. Kick your left, uh, right leg up. Squeeze, and then drop. Ah. These are gonna, they're gonna hold you, and you need to squeeze and drop yourself. You're still gonna, you're, these are gonna be your handlebars that you're holding on to. All right, you continue. Bang out your last one, ah. girl. Yeah. But good thing you had a pole to help you. Thank <laughs> you. 
No. We're gonna just stick to what I know, y'all. This is it. Look at it. Must be in the background as your hype man. Yeah. <laughs> y'all see her? <laughs> Thank you so much. Say bye to the camera. Don't sweat it. Bye, you guys. Until next time. Thank you so much.